Brought to you by C Prime, an Atlassian Platinum and Enterprise Solution Partner and an Atlassian Verified Vendor. Power Scripts for Jira. To make a single line comment, use a double slash. To make a multi line comment, you start with a slash followed by an asterisk and anything between the next asterisk and slash will be a comment. Now there are some variable types inside cell. We have a string, a boolean, which is true false, a number, date, or interval. Interval is a time span like two days and three hours. So to declare a variable, you use the following syntax. And every line must be ended with a semicolon. I could also give this variable a value. Same thing with the other types. Check my code. So that's basically how you declare a variable. So those are the types, but there is another type of object inside cell, um, which is an array. An array is just a collection of variables. So a single array could contain five or 10 or 100 string variables or a Boolean variable or any of the other types you see listed. You can also create multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, what that would be is each value in the array is itself made up of an array. So there's a hierarchy to it. To declare an array, you add the brackets after the type in declaring the array. So almost the same syntax as this regular string variable up here, but with the brackets. Now to add values to an array, I can add those values when declaring it. So if this was an array of fruit, I would just put the list inside these curly brackets, separated by comma. Now, if I want to, well, you see how I assigned a value to this string when I declared it. You can also assign a value later in the script like this. And you can do the same thing with array. You don't necessarily need to do it here. So to get value in an array, the shortcut syntax would look like this. So what I'm saying is I don't want to replace all the values inside the fruit array. I just want to add it to the existing values. And that's what the plus equal shortcut does. We'll go over arrays in more detail later. The next syntax I'm just going to briefly touch upon would be the syntax for creating a custom routine or function. So you would just declare the function like this, give it a name, and close it in curly brackets. You would define parameters here.
that would be used in your function. And the last step of the function would just be to return a value. We'll go over the use of functions in more detail at a later point. But that is the basic syntax for declaring uh, variables inside SIL. So operators inside SIL are, we'll say, the obvious ones. So plus, minus, multiplies, divides, all operate as you would expect. To concatenate strings, you can actually use the plus sign. So if I have string left equals hello, What I can do is say left plus right. So this is what an arrow looks like. I think it's capital S. Yep. So now if I were to go and run it, we have hello world. So that the plus operator concatenates the text. When writing comparisons, such as those in if-then-else statements, you don't just say equals, like here, because the equals operator is trying to set a value. To compare a value, you would use a double equal sign. If you don't use a double equal sign, you'll get an error in the script that won't run. So this says, if the value of the left variable is equal to hello, then perform an action inside the brackets. Not equals would be an exclamation point instead of the first equal sign. So, if the value of the left variable does not equal hello, perform an action. The other comparison operators would be greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to. Oops. All right, I can do it. There we go. Or less than or equal to. Then you have some logical operators. For example, if I want to say if left is equal to hello and right is equal to world, you would use this double ampersand for and. For or, you'd use double pipe sign. So we've already started using the syntax for the if then else statement. So let's see what the rest of it is. What you can do is add additional conditions like this for the else if. it with an else and you don't need an operator here. So that is the basic syntax of an if then else statement. You also have loops. So to loop from 1 to 100 I could say 4 and I need to declare my 
variable. So I'm starting at zero. I'm going to continue my loop until x is equal to 100. And for each loop, I'm going to increment 1. And then I could say 1 log. Now if I hop over and run the script, we just get from 0 to 100. So that's our loop. Another way to do a loop is to loop all, through all the values of an array. So let's say I want to loop through the fruit. I'm going to comment this out. What I can say is for string f in fruit, which is just a very easy way uh, of saying for each object in the fruit array, I can say runner long f. And there we've looped through everything in the fruit array. Then you have your while statements. So that would be something like while, I don't know, uh, left does not equal hello. And that would run forever unless we had something in the script that says so this is a loop that just keeps going until a specific condition is met this next bit of code is very similar in concept to the while loop but the expression is evaluated after the fact so this it's do and it performs the action and then checks to see the value of i to see when the loop should be terminated so that's the do while loop so that's the basic syntax that you need to know for creating a sil script When talking about comparisons, there are two basic routines you should know, and that's the is null routine and the is not null routine. So, for example, if I'm doing an if condition and I want to check to see if the value of the description has any input, I can say is null description. that would return, it would perform the code inside if there was description, or I could say is equal to false. Or you could just say is not null. Those are two very helpful functions for checking the value variables.